Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is chicken butchering day. It is our first time ever doing any kind of butchering whatsoever. I personally have never taken, you know, killed a chicken, a rabbit, a cow, a deer, nothing. I've never done anything like that. So this is kind of a, a bit of a strange day, and I kind of spent the morning re-watching a bunch of videos I've watched in the past and kind of trying to get a game plan in order. And so now I'm just going outside and taking care of the other chicken chores and all the other homestead chores that I need to take care of. So I figured I'd bring you along, kind of show you just very simply what I'm doing. And uh, right now we're just going to um, feed the chickens, <laughs> feed the, the, uh, the big egg layers. I'm probably going to go ahead and leave them inside the coop for now. Number one, because my husband put a lock on it and didn't tell me what the code was just yet and he's still sleeping. Number two, we're going to be doing the processing likely right over there in eye shot and I'm sure they probably won't even notice or mind or care, but just it seems weird to let them out of the coop and just butcher a bunch of birds in front of them. So I'm probably going to leave them in there and I didn't give them their feed because I got plenty of food in there. So <laughs> I'm just gonna give it to the next set of birds. Okay, so we don't have everything necessary for a truly proper, you know, chicken butchering. We have a plucker, which is amazing. We have a propane heater, which is amazing. And I have a, a big canning pot that we're gonna go ahead and use and just basic kitchen knives. Other than that, like, I mean, other than the plucker and the propane heater, we didn't really, not heater, but propane burner, we got a, uh, a growing rooster over there uh, but we didn't really buy anything special yet and we're going to and just gonna kind of see you know if we have what we need why buy more but the plucker and the outside propane burner are were definitely necessary so this track this tractor right here I have not perfected it is an old awning that I converted into a chicken tractor with just some stuff like uh, Hardware cloth and chicken wire and some, like, the red stuff is like an old, like a, not an old, but it's a, like one of those dog tether things, like the ropes that you do, that you use to, to let, to chain up a dog, basically. And it just runs around to give it some, some stability and some structure. But, moving, <laughs> this beast is heavy. So, <laughs> let me show you the weird way that I move it every day. It is starting to rain, and so I need to get this camera undercover. I'm just gonna fill up the water. I'm gonna fill, fill up the water here, and then we're gonna get moving on trying to get the chicken tractor, or not the chicken tractor, getting the chicken butchering station all set up. Okay, so now we're trying to get our butchering station all set up. I have this one big giant, it's like one of those usual canvas kind of tent type things, but it doesn't have a cover. So, and we have another one that had a cover on it that broke and the cover's all ripped and torn, but I'm kind of making shift because this cover is just, is maybe like six inches short of the, this actual uh, canopy structure. And so basically we're just kind of making do. <laughs> and uh, Robert is over there and he's getting this plucker all set up. And then I have the, the tank here all ready to go, the, the propane tank and the burner. And then we're just gonna get the water going. Probably by the time the water's all warmed up, we'll be ready to go. Now that we have our setup all kind of set up, where Robert went to go and grab a couple of chickens and we're kind of ready to go. I totally makeshift everything. We have over there, we have the killing station. We have the two cones on top of a couple of, with attached to a couple of pallets. And then it's gonna go into the scalder right there. And then it's gonna go into the plucker right there. And then, uh, we have a table set up here that we can actually gut them and stuff and we have ice water on the far end in the cooler and on the closer end We just have some cold water to help them. We're gonna have them kind of cool off and then we're gonna like actually put them in some ice water Possibly overnight and bag them up tomorrow or we'll bag them up today We're not sure exactly which then I just want to make sure that you know This is not in any way shape or form any kind of a how-to butchering thing This is the first time somebody's ever done anything like this kind of video and just showing you how we're doing our learning process. That's pretty much it. 
forewarning, there's gonna be some guts and some gross stuff, so if you don't like that, don't watch. But just so you're aware, I'm not gonna show the actual killing because I don't think that's cool. Oh, I'll be good. Yeah. Shot out and got out my shoulder. Gross. Yeah, I know. I'm scared. It smells. Okay, so this is it, right? Yeah, off to the off to the side. Side. Right. Here. The other side. Other side. Oh, don't do it. Some good nitrogen. Someone did it as well. Okay. I think so. Are you supposed to take the head off before? Mm hmm. Oh. This wasn't Testicles are inside, right? Yeah. Well, this was a rooster. Oh, well, they're all roosters, right? Yeah, they should all be roosters. I don't, um, uh, there's not a hundred percent chance. Shot a hundred percent. See the chicken testicles? Why not? They're like the size of a bean. Tiny. Put them in your beans. <laughs> Might be good for you. I mean, whether it's a chicken or you know a bull, it's still a testicle. It's still testosterone. Hopefully no bad smells as far as crap is concerned. Man. Oh yeah, the neck. I would say just the heart. Okay, so now what while we're doing is just taking apart the chickens one at, one at a time. And probably going to just do like a batch and a batch and a batch. We have, I think, 19 birds total, maybe 20. Uh, but I think he originally had 20 and one of them died a long time ago and they were a little itty bitty. 
And so we're just gonna keep going until we're done. Oh, I hate putting on gloves with wet hands. I need to wear gloves. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish all of these birds up. I mean, it's all just the same thing over and over again. So there's not really a whole lot of point of showing you the entire thing. It's starting to rain and I don't wanna to have to protect my camera outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go and we're gonna bring you back later when we're ready to actually start bagging these things up. That's right. Whether that's later today or tomorrow. It is tomorrow. We finished up with all of, we we got all the chickens all like defeathered and my husband went ahead and eviscerated all of them, but I had to bail out early because I had to go to work and then my husband stayed and he actually was amazing and he finished and cleaned everything up and finished eviscerating all the chickens and just cleaned up everything and it was awesome. So I thought that I would go ahead and surprise him because he's planning on having to come home and bag up all of these chickens. So I'm gonna attempt attempt to go ahead and get all of these things bagged up. I have my water going right there, it just started. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of these, just get everything set up so we can just hopefully bag these up fairly quickly and move on to the next project that I have going on for today and go ahead and wrap up this video and showing you the first time of actually processing chickens without ever having done it before. So let's get on it. While we're waiting for the ch the water to actually boil, I thought I would take this opportunity to kind of give you a couple of things that I think I didn't mention yesterday in the, the actual butchering process. And just some things that I don't think I've ever seen anybody really talk about in the process. And I mean, it's nothing major or serious. It's just stuff like, oh, that happens. I would say probably the first thing that you kind of have to prepare for is actually just taking the life of the chicken. That's pretty, you know, fairly difficult, even knowing the entire time you're raising these animals, that's what's gonna end up happening. If you've never hunted, if you've never, you know, killed an animal, if you've never taken part in that process before, it can be a bit heavy. It can be a bit of a challenge. And I mean, it's not anything that's like devastating or anything like that, but it can be really difficult to, to actually be the one to take the life of your food. It can be difficult, but, at the same time, I mean, I guess it's, it's probably easier knowing the entire time when you're raising it that that's what's gonna happen, but I just thought I'd share, you know, it, it's a little bit difficult, it's a little bit uh, tough to, you know, slip the throat of a chicken and watch it wiggle around, even though you know that that's just mostly nerves, but it's still tough. And definitely the next thing that I've never seen anybody ever talk about, and it's surprising because almost every single one of the chickens did it, and that is when you have them upside down and they're in the cones, don't like stand directly behind the chicken because they just, whew, and it, it, it's projectile. It just, it goes pretty darn far. Yeah, I mean, even it, it, we hadn't fed the chickens for well over 24 hours. And so, you know, some of them had some, some solids in there and but a lot of it was just like projectile just weird smelling stuff that came out you know so just don't stand behind them stand off to the side probably <laughs> also just make sure that the temperature is between you know like 145 and 150 I, one or two of the chickens I had them a little bit too hot and you like the the actual chicken itself had started to cook in the process and I had a feeling that that had happened but when Robert was actually starting to to gut that chicken, like it had, it had some white breast to it. So I definitely had overheated one of them. Most of them I did pretty well, and there wasn't a big issue with really any of them. It, the whole process was pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty gross. Uh, there's you know lots of manure. There's lots of you know blood and guts and just ick. So I mean, just be prepared for that. Tonight we're going to find out how much it was worth it because we're going to go ahead and cook that chicken that's already partially cooked. So with these chickens, basically what we're doing, I've got these bags on Amazon. I wanted to order them from uh, one of the hatcheries and I will for the next one, but I just needed them. I didn't prepare well enough and I needed them quickly enough that I had to order them from Amazon. So it just, it came with these straws. Zip ties. 
And it said there's 50 bags, so it should be 50 at least. And so basically all we do is I'm getting the water hot and it says uh, 180 to 180 to 195. And so we're gonna go ahead and warm that up and then waiting for that to cook, we'll put the chickens in. I don't have any of the fancy, you know, things that like help you stand it up on end or anything like that. So we're just gonna try and do this the best I can. And hopefully it's not too challenging for one person to do by themselves. Cause I'd really like to surprise Robert with these all finished and so he can just have a relaxing evening. Maybe while I'm waiting for the water to heat up, I can just start putting these chickens in the bags. How about that? And overnight, we go ahead, we kept these in coolers so that they, or well, one is in a cooler and one's in a tub like this, but they both still have ice left over. So I know that they've been chilled and quickly cold for the whole night. We refreshed the ice right before we went to bed. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention about the things that you're kind of surprised by is the smell of the cavity inside. Even without any kind of contamination, I think only one of them we actually, or two of them, I think we actually punctured the intestines. The rest of them were pretty clean, but it's still it a weird, weird smell inside. I can't even put my finger on what the smell is. It's not like a manure or any kind of weird funky thing, but I mean, it was funky, but not anything that I can really pinpoint. It was just strange. This is going to be tough, isn't it? wasn't so that bad at all. So I wanted to kind of show you this is a pretty good example. We're not like any kind of pro at actually like eviscerating or gutting or you know butchering chickens but these chickens man there's like a just so much there's just like a nice layer of this yellow fat on these things like holy smokes. I think we're in the perfect place. We got the perfect temperature. We got all the birds bagged up. Okay, so this straw is the dumbest thing ever on planet Earth. It just squishes and it doesn't actually let any air out. So I have this straw. It's a hard plastic straw. I've had it for many, many years. I got it with a like a ball book, ball, not a ball book, like the uh, mason top, not mason top. I got it with a mason jar kit. So that's about all there is to it. I got all of the 18 birds processed weighed. I'm going to go ahead and add all of those up and then I'll be back to let you know kind of, you know, if it's worth it. So I went ahead and crunched all of the numbers. They averaged probably uh, like high four, low five pounds a piece. And the grand total for the 18 that we did today was 85.29, uh, 85.29 pounds. And if you factor in the market price around here for pasture raised organic chicken is between six to seven, sometimes even as high as $8 a pound. And so I went ahead and went on the low end of that. And for $5 a pound, I, <clears throat> that was a total of $511.74 worth of chicken. And <clears throat> so basically that's about so $28.43, $28.43 per, per, per bird, basically. So each one's worth 30 bucks. And I spent probably, I, I spent, I think most of them were like a dollar a pound because they were a dollar each, between one to $2 each. I can't remember if that's the batch that I got at half off. <coughs> so, you know, call it $2 per bird. Uh, so that would bring it to 26.43. And then each one 
probably went through, I'd say like, not even a half a bag of feed. Yeah, definitely not even a half a bag of feed because there's no way that I went through 10 bags of feed for just that one batch. It was probably more like six. So we'll go ahead and calculate that at six bags each. The feed for them was about $210. And then uh, factor in $40 for the actual purchase of the birds themselves, that brings it to $250. And then if you divide that, $250 by 85.29, uh, I got organic pasture-raised chicken for $2.93 a pound plus my time. Really mostly the only time that I actually spent on the birds was just feeding them and moving their tractor every day, which was like almost nothing. And then the processing time, which was, it was a few hours, I think, between Robert and I, we probably spent, if I had to guess, I would say, I think it was about four hours total. But once we actually get the hang of it and have like a system in place, I would imagine it probably wouldn't take more than maybe two hours. And that would probably include the, the bagging time as well. So, I mean, I have the, <coughs> sorry, I'm eating pork rinds and it got my throat and it's like really itchy. So as you can see, I, th I personally think that that is definitely well worth the investment of my time and the investment of our resources into raising our own birds especially given how important it is and how much of a part of my life, especially chicken broth is to me, but I also just enjoy the chickens as well. So it's really good to have on hand and I enjoy it. So that makes it worth it to me. <laughs> and I just enjoy raising chickens. It's, it's a lot of fun. The end part, not so much, but the actual raising part is pretty cool. I hope you guys were able to learn something from me in my process. If you want to go ahead and share any tips and tricks and things like that that you think I didn't include or maybe something that I did not encounter or a way that you have that could make the process of actually butchering these chickens go smoother or just whatever you'd like to, go ahead and share it in the comment section below. I look forward to reading those. And then uh, be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.